Hey, this is Yogi Brian. Welcome to the Yogi Show, episode 4,572,000. Just kidding. It's episode 24. We have a amazing guest. It is Joy Bauer, the host of NBC's Health and Happiness Show. She is also the health and nutrition expert on the Today Show, author of 12 best selling books. And it just so happens that she's the author of my son Noah's favorite book, Yummy Yoga. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's one of my favorite books as well. The cover on Yummy Yoga is an avocado doing trikonasana, an avocado doing triangle pose, and I just want avocado toast right now. But stay tuned, listen to this episode. You're gonna get a lot out of it, especially for that new year, new me, 2020 is coming up. You gotta listen. Welcome to the show, Mrs. Joy Bauer. How are you today? I'm great. Better than I'm with you guys. All right. Guys. We, we love <laughs> ah, we love hearing that. That's the best. Like when someone <laughs> says like funny, now they were better there with you. Like that is like brings so much joy to my heart. I'm sure Yogi Brian's heart is exploding right now. Oh, yes, it is exploding. Thank you so much, Joy, for coming on the show. We appreciate you. And we love your book, Yummy Yoga. Oh, thank you. I feel like it's perfect for you all. It is. It re- it's it's right up our alley. You know, I have three kids. Brian's got one kid, and it's like w- this book was like I think it was like made for us. As soon as like we found out about it, like I got it, and I was like, "This is fantastic!" Boom, hundred percent. How old are all of your kids? Uh, so I have a twelve-year-old girl, eight-year-old boy, and a two-year-old boy who is constantly on fire and never leaves me alone. But I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And my son is nine years old. And since I've been on my yoga journey, which has been about three years, he's been pretty much with me on the yoga journey. Like I took him to my yoga teacher training. He was there on the weekends and I take him to classes. So he he has been a part of my yoga journey. So I surprised him with the yummy yoga book. I, I didn't tell him and I handed it to him and he was so like, so happy about just the pictures and the yoga and the food. Oh, gosh. Well, that totally makes my heart sing. And don't you think it's so cool how kids nowadays are introduced to yoga at such a young age? You know, here I was thinking that this book was going to be new to, you know, millions and millions of kids all over. And what I'm hearing from parents is like, how perfect, because my kid already does yoga. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I just think that that's so tremendous. It's a new world for sure. Absolutely. When you, um, I know, Joe, your kids are a little bit older. Um, did, oh, they have yeah. any, did they have any introduction to yoga at all when they were in school or anything like that? Or have they found it all in their life in these days? So these days, yes. But no, not even a little bit way back in the day. So my kids are way older. My oldest, uh, my daughter is 24. My son is 22. And my youngest is a sophomore in college and she's 19. So now everybody does yoga. But sure. really... I think they probably started doing yoga in high school when I, you know, introduced it into our lives. And we did a lot of yoga when we would be on vacation. You know, when you go away on vacation, they always, you know, have these cool classes in the spas and the gyms that you can try. So I I would say it wasn't until high school because certainly in their schools, you know, preschool, elementary school, way back in the day, they did not normally do yoga. And now it's everywhere which is so cool because you know all the benefits for kids. It helps to ease anxiety and stress. It enhances focus, academic performance. And of course, you know, all of the good things like increased core strength and flexibility and balance. I wish my kids did yoga when they were younger, but they've caught up. Yeah. At least they caught, caught, at least they caught up, you know, at least they caught up, (laughs) you know, where did, um, so Joy, you have a a regular practice these days, um, of yoga. No. Well, um, I do yoga on my own um, mm-hmm. a few times during the week. I also like I, I catch myself just doing moments here and there for sure. And yes. I have a couple of instructors that I absolutely adore and worship in my neck of the woods. And I try to catch classes with them. I would say once a week if I'm lucky. My schedule mm-hmm. is a little wonky. Right. Whose um, isn't? Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But it's definitely a regular part of my life. And more so now with the book, for sure. 
Absolutely. Incorporating that into the mix. And I know what it's like to be, you know, to find ourselves, everything is so busy, right? Like everything is so busy these days. Like everything is happening at warp speed. You know, what kind of advice, I mean, I know you're, you're really in, obviously into health and wellness, like one of the leading experts in the nation. And we're so grateful that you're on the show, but what do you have as advice for listeners out there that are just looking to incorporate, you know, more of a health conscious approach to their life, but they say, you know, I just don't have enough time to cook at home or I don't have enough time to go to that yoga class for an hour. Like, what do you tell somebody? I'm sure you get that all the time. What do you tell somebody? And, and it's a real problem. Like that is our reality. And it's not for lack of desire. There's so many people that aspire to be healthy, but juggling so many things, it is darn hard to, to meet our health goals. Like I get it. I certainly get it. Um, well, from, from the food perspective, I think there's a lot of things that people can do to achieve greatness without putting in a whole lot of effort. So the first thing is to embrace some of the great gadgets that we have. I love my slow cooker. I love my Instant Pot. I like I like doing one sheet meals. Do you guys do a lot of cooking? I do. Brian, do you? I, I do. I don't do a lot of cooking. I need to. I need to. <laughs> After seeing this book, I'm like, I, I can do these. I yeah. can do these <laughs> recipes. And after this podcast, you're going right into the kitchen, Brian. Yes. <laughs> I want, and I want to see pictures. I need pictures <laughs> for validation. Pictures or it didn't happen. Picture, Tell I, me, I'll, Brian. I'll, I'll send pictures. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, you're hearing it. Joy is challenging me. <laughs> the you Joy cook. Challenge. I'll be taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Tag me. I need to see them. I will. Um, I will. So, so slow cooker, instant pot meals, and one sheet meals or one pot meals are huge for me. The other thing, um, whatever you could prep ahead of time, like I love making overnight oats. You know, mm. you stash everything in a mason jar. I also, I love festive presentation as well. So if you stash, um, you know, oats with a little bit of milk and chia seeds and some flavorings and fruit. Roots, you stir that thing up, you stash it at night in the fridge, and you wake up and you don't have to do anything for a hearty, delicious, good for you breakfast. So that's another little tip. I also tell everybody that we need five easy, simple, go to dinner recipes up our sleeve that we can whip up in less than I would, I'd love to say 15 minutes, but 15 to 30 minutes. And you need to know what those recipes are and have at least the ingredients for two of them in your pantry or fridge at all times. I love that. So for me, it's turkey burgers, it's vegetable omelets or frittatas. I can make a grilled chicken Parmesan in less than 15 minutes. I kid you not. Done. That, yeah. Wow. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> So these are the sort of things that you need. And even chicken enchiladas, I make in the slow cooker and I throw everything in my slow cooker in the morning before I head out the door at some ungodly hour. <laughs> and then I come home and my pulled enchilada chicken is ready in that slow cooker. I very, very quickly put the enchiladas together in the oven and in about five to seven minutes, they are melty and delicious. And my kids think that I have slaved for this Mexican <laughs> for hours and hours. So again, like lots and lots of little tricks that everybody can do. And lastly, I will say that when you do cook, double or triple the recipe because then you have all these great leftovers. I love leftovers and I portion control them in single serve containers and I stash them in the freezer. And here's some huge advice. Always label what they are. You know, you want to label them and date them so you don't end up with the whole slew of mystery items in, in that freezer. And yeah. basically what you're doing is you're creating your own homemade takeout station. You know, then suddenly you have like this huge amount of go-to meals that you know are good for you and delicious and, um, you know, ready just to warm up. So that's another great tip as well. It's all about pre-planning. It's not that hard. You just need to take a beat and figure out what your plan is and then forge forward. I love that. I love that planning. And I just, I, all I'm picturing is enchiladas right now. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I, yeah, I, I just Brian, pictured the enchiladas. Your first venture. I'm, That's I'm, it. That is going to be it. my first That's going to be it. All I, right. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that. Enchiladas are in my head, and planning is such a key. I do 100% agree with that. And like for planning, what sort of morning routine like would you recommend to someone, or what some sort of morning routine do you have to like plan your day? Yeah, at the ungodly hour, Joy. 
Yeah. So I'm a little bit like shot out of a cannon in the morning and all my days are very, very different. So it's going to depend on my schedule. Um, I mean, some mornings I could be out the door at four or 5 a.m. And other mornings I get to lounge around a little bit and, you know, sip some black coffee. That's my religion in the morning. I can't Uh, get started. Are you guys coffee people? I love coffee. I hate coffee. Yes. Are you a tea drinker? I'm a neither drinker. <laughs> they wow. both give me anxiety if they got caffeine in them, so I'm good. <laughs> Just okay. relax. On that. Okay. Yeah. So I I like to um you know have some coffee in the morning. I always have to start my day off with a walk. So normally I I'll walk thirty to sixty minutes, whether it's you know downstairs on my treadmill or whether it's outside when the weather is permitting. And I definitely do some you know stretches and yoga poses, a little bit of meditation. Um, just to just to get myself in that positive mindset. Another thing I love to do in the morning, and it sounds a little cliche, but it really, really helps to make us happy, is coming up with or reminding myself of three things I'm grateful for yes. or proud of. It's so, so important. And there's a lot of repetition here. You know, normally for me, it's family health and a job that I absolutely love. But I try to dig a little deeper and come up with details within. So I change it around a little bit and it could be something small. It could be something monumental depending upon the day, depending upon the week. And another thing that helps me tremendously to sort of like ease anxiety and stress level and make me feel organized is the night before I go to sleep. I always craft a to-do list for the next day. I either will email it to myself or write it down on paper because I feel like then it declutters my brain so I get a better night's sleep and I wake up to it in the morning so I sort of have this roadmap. So that was a lot of things that I threw out there and I don't necessarily have order for them, but it really works for me and it it sets the tone for an organized and more peaceful day because I've got a plan. Right. Yeah. Got a plan. And I, I love, I love, I love all those tips that you provided in terms of routine. One I really love is the, the list for the night before I have not done that. Like the, the night before, like setting that list and, and it allows your mind to think about it or to process it when you're sleeping. No, you're so right. And what happens with me is if I don't, you know, sort of take the list in my head and remove it out of my head onto paper, I lay awake in bed and I'm on overdrive. Like, you know, like I do not want to be a brain cell in my head if I have to read my list. Bring me to the emergency room, quick. Absolutely. All the red bubbles are popping up from your phone into your head though. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. But I, I love the gratitude. I love the gratitude in the morning. That's something that I started doing. I, I challenged myself in February to do a meditation practice in the morning and write a gratitude list like every day for 90 days in the morning just to see what would happen. Because before this, I had a yoga practice, but I didn't have a meditation practice or a mm-hmm. gratitude practice. And I didn't really see anything new until like writing the gratitude list for like... I think it was like day 66. I was driving and I was in traffic and I was getting frustrated and I realized I was coming back to that gratitude. And I realized like there was a change in my brain that, whoa, I'm starting to think in terms of being grateful now. So it's so important, everybody out there, like gratitude in the morning, you know, writing that list. It, 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 um, like reinforces the glass half full. I think it's very, very easy to let your mind go to the, you know, not so fun stuff, the humdrum stuff. And I think when you do the gratitude journal, whether, you know, it's formally in a journal or it's in your head on a daily basis, it forces you to think out of the box and not necessarily always repeat the go-tos over and over and over again. And it also forces you to think way more than just generally speaking. And I'd love to, you know, extrapolate the detailed things, the things that you tend to over miss, um, but, but truly are grateful for them. Uh, We're proud of them. It could be a proud thing also. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm proud that we're able to have this conversation with you that the internet worked. I don't want to jinx it though. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we're in trouble. Oh no, now we're in trouble. <laughs> but but the re- that the reality of that is 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 so right, Joy. Is that there's so many things. I I was on a show the other day and I was talking about the half the glass half empty or half full. And when you said it, it just brought me back to the moment of perspective, like just being having the perspective that everything is right and just in this moment. And we have these the necessary things that we need for survival. We have love, we have family, we have community, we have a job, we have all of these things, you know? Who who cares if there's like an extra two minutes of traffic because the stoplight's out? Like, what does that really matter in the grand <laughs> scheme? Like, what does it matter? You know, what does it matter? But people get so caught up in that. And it's just like, a, you know, it's unfortunate, but having a practice and a routine and uh, really helps you know, bring us back to that state of gratitude and being, which is so key in these days when it's so easy to get wrapped up in all the other things. Amen. And, and going into, you know, and going into 2020, like we're going into new, a new decade and uh, Joy, this, this show will be aired right before, um, before the, the 2020. So lots of new things. People have all these, you know, you know how it is, Joy, right? New year, new me, all these transformations. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the walking, the gratitude, the yoga, the meditation, the mindful eating all at the same time, (laughs) starting Jan 1. Like, (laughs) yeah, Brian, (laughs) Brian's doing all of that on day one, right, Brian? Oh, Brian. I'm doing all that. Yep. (laughs) Brian, you're a busy guy. You got to go. I know, right? I'm I'm actually cooking. I'm cooking right now (laughs) while while I'm recording this. I smell it. I smell it. The computer. <laughs> Those are good enchiladas, man. You know, if you come out to Phoenix and then go visit Sedona, I'll make you some enchiladas. I Let's promise. go. Let's go. That is one of the most beautiful places on earth. I love it. I go up there as much as I can. Like I normally once or twice a month, I'm up there for the weekend, just Ugh. walking, hiking, being the zen. red rock. Mm. Yes. Beautiful. Doing all that. Amazing yeah. there. Go- goals to get there. Maybe 2020 is the year, you know, goals, goals to get there. We're trying to make that happen. So may- maybe it will. Maybe this is more of the invitation to make that happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Joy, tell us, people that are trying to get motivated for the new year, what can you say to them? Like they're saying, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do all these things or what's one thing that they could start now to make I that think shift? Probably the most important thing that everybody can do is to come up with a reason In other words, like, why do you personally want to make changes? Why do you want to start a health journey? I always say to people that it's not worth starting anything unless your head is in the game because getting healthy, whether it's losing weight, starting a yoga routine, being more peaceful and grounded, it's 50% attitude, right? So finding a personal significant and enduring reason for wanting to start a health journey and then sticking with it is the number one thing that everyone can do. Once you have your reason and you believe in yourself, you get big things done. And that's going to be very personal and different for everybody. For some people, it could be you know, wanting to reduce the recurrence of a cancer. For other people, it's just being comfortable in their skin or having more energy. For others, maybe it's getting off of statin medication or being a healthy role model for kids. So everyone's going to have their very, very own reason, but it can't be wanting to fit into a certain dress for an upcoming wedding (laughs) or a reunion. It's got to be big and powerful and meaningful. So I would say that would be my first thing. And the second thing would be to create short-term goals. I love the big goals. Everybody has their big goal. I want to run the New York City Marathon. I want to lose 50 pounds. I want to learn how to cook. (laughs) Brian, I keep picking on you. (laughs) (laughs) That's so good. (laughs) I think it's the short-term goals, which are way more powerful because they reinforce success every step of the way. And we're goal-oriented people, and we need that continuous motivation, that continuous pat on the back to say, hey, you know, you're doing things right. You're getting things done. And that just is a snowball, right? It motivates us to do more and more and more. It's continuous fuel to finally get to your ultimate finish line. So I think if everybody could formally start these short-term weekly goals, and, you know, like for Brian, maybe for you, it's one time each week, I'm going to learn how to cook or try to cook a new recipe. For other people, it can be, um, I'm going to try a new exercise class, or I'm going to get to yoga twice each week, or mm-hmm. you know, maybe every morning I'm going to do or write in my gratitude journal. So these are action goals, weekly goals that add up quickly. So I think getting your head in the game and finding your reason, 
would be number one. And number two would be to create some sort of a weekly mini goal agenda and stick with it. Hey, this is Yogi Brian Chiming with that mid-episode trivia here. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I know Pedro appreciates each and every one of you listening to the show today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get to some trivia so we can get back to the show. Get out your pen and paper, your etch a sketch, or your notepad on your phone. But if you're driving, pay attention. Watch the road. But here is your question. So what is the name of the vegetable that is also a flower what is the name of the vegetable that is also a flower we're going to give you this answer at the end of the episode so stay tuned for that let's get back to the show yeah staying committed to the you know staying brian what's that quote used to say in golf committing to the process how did it go yeah yeah stay in the present commit to the process I That's love like that. That's great. Mantra. I used to play competitive golf back when I was younger and I read, I think it was golf is not a game of perfect because golf is all like mental. It's all in your head pretty much. And yeah, that was like my mantra is that he said in that book, stay in the present, commit to the process. And I, that's a beautiful thing. I like that a lot. And it's amazing that you said, Joy, just starting with something simple. It's like doing, like not saying I'm going to do it every day, you know, three times a day, but at least I'm going to do it, start with once a week. And I'm going to be able to achieve, achieve that goal. And achieving that goal, even though it maybe it's small on like a macro scale, it feels good. Failure sucks. Like failure doesn't feel good, mm-hmm. but achieving that small goal will feel good. So, and then you can stack your chips and build on that. You know, right. I want to share, you know, I had a goal this year. Um, I wanted to floss my teeth. Uh-huh. every day. And on January 1st, you know, this was 2019, January 1st rolled around and I was like, I'm going to have this goal. I'm going to floss my teeth every day for like 30 days, you know, mm-hmm. because I, at nighttime I was always, you know, like I do it sometimes this, that, and the other. And, um, I got into like day 60 and I, I was, I called it the floss challenge. And I kept telling my, my beautiful wife, Summer, like, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. And I've flossed every day for the whole year. And it made the shift. That was like the shift that I needed in my life that got me to like do other things more consistently. Like that small thing Mm -hmm. of flossing your teeth made me show up better in my life as a parent, as a yoga teacher, as a student, because I was able to say like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a workout routine. I'm going to be more present with my children. And it started with one little action of flossing my teeth. I I can't believe I'm saying it, but that's the reality. That's what happened. No, I get it. It's very yeah. fulfilling. And by the way, you know, the examples that I gave were easy. They were simple, mm-hmm. right? Very In terms easy. of those yeah. great goals. Totally. But for personalities that need a little bit more, I mean, they could be grander. For example, it could be, you know, I'm going to drink half of my weight in water ounces. I'm struggling with that every so single day. Yeah, because that's a big one for people. Hydration. Yeah. People do not drink enough water. So that could be another mini goal. And another uh, one when it comes to vegetables could be something like, you know, I'm going to incorporate two cups of vegetables into each and every dinner. Or I'm going to pack a piece of fruit with my brown bag lunch every day for lunch. Yes. So I think it's a matter of knowing your personality, not setting yourself up for failure, but but also, you know, you could have a do-over. So if you yeah. have one week that you failed, uh, just repeat it the next week and, and forge forward. Or maybe that's just something that, you know, you, you're not necessarily capable of in the moment conquering, and you mm-hmm. can come back to it at a different right. point. But there's no past fail here. I love the weekly mini goals. I think they're very yeah. powerful in, on so many different levels. And congratulations on your flossing. <laughs> yeah, congrats, Thank Pedro. You. And now, like, think about it. Next time you go to the dentist and get your teeth clean, like, you can say that you did floss. Like, you do floss. I did. You know, so I, I went for this. Lies. I lie. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I'm like, well, I did once. You know- I know. Sure. I do the floss dance. <laughs> Does that count? Yeah. I'm not sure it counts, Joy, but I would love to see that on your Instagram story yeah, and tag us and we will 100% reshare that. We'll 100% reshare. Yeah, we'll 100%, that will go Joy viral. Joy doing the floss. Sure. That will go viral. Joy doing the floss. <laughs> you know that, that that would end up on the Today Show. I will yeah, not On the Today Show. Right? For yeah, sure it would. For sure. <laughs> and, you know, 
But thinking about food and and you know coming into these weekly routines and doing things uh, to help make us feel better and feel good in our life, you know, is that part of the reason that you created Yummy Yoga? I mean, just to make it easier for families to connect with their children and kids to cook something, you know, is that part of the premise behind it? Because this was your first kids book, and you had written already a whole bunch of other books that were bestsellers. So this was you know, my first kids book. This might be one of the most fun projects I've ever done. I just I love I love this book so much, and I've always loved working with kids. So a lot of people don't know that the whole beginning of my career was actually working with kids. I was the director of nutrition and fitness for pediatric cardiology for years and before getting into television and before writing books. And I also ran programs in Harlem and East Harlem. So areas that were at high risk for heart disease and obesity and type two diabetes. Um, and I taught kindergarten through 12th grade, both exercise and nutrition. So the way that this book came about actually, so aside having this huge love for working with kids and families, my college friend, Bonnie Stevens, who happens to be a brilliant photographer and she's a fellow yogi. She lives in Virginia on a horse farm. She is awesome. I mean, this girl is gold. She started posing foods in yoga positions. <laughs> yeah. So then, I, I'm going to tell the story about how that you keep telling your story. And I got a good one for Joy. I don't know. I don't know if you know it yet. So keep telling yours. So she, and she, so she sends them to me via email with like these funny little emojis saying like, what do you make of this? Uh -huh. and it, you know, first I like, I giggled and <laughs> like a few people. And then my brain started racing because I knew there was something here for kids. And I have to say yeah. that, you know, out of the, tens of thousands of kids that I've worked with in my career, there's two things that I've learned. One is it is ridiculously hard to get kids interested in new foods, especially fruits and vegetables. And well, that's for sure. Eaters. And number two, if you make it fun, if you make it exciting and interactive, they are way more apt to be interested in it. So this checked those boxes and I thought, oh my gosh, we have to write a kid's book together. Yummy yeah. yoga, this is it. And it was born. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And that's how it's born. And, you know, so th the way that we, and that's so great. I love everything about the book, like everything about the book and everything about that story and that connection, how powerful and how cool is that, that Bonnie had the idea to create food photography with, you know, in a yoga shape with like an mm -hmm. eggplant and like a piece of broccoli, you know, they're so creative. Bonnie Stevens does that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so Brian and I started making memes about yoga on the internet, like four years ago, I started and Brian a couple years ago. Um, and Bonnie had reached out to us with an email and uh, with a, a picture of the one of the one of the images from the book that she shot with like a funny saying for a funny meme. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was kind of like, uh, OK, yeah. like this is interesting. I've never I've never really seen something like this, but this is this is interesting. And all the way at the bottom, like there was like a whole bunch of co text and copy and pictures and all the way at the bottom. It says like, P.S. Joy might want to be on your podcast. And I said, uh, I said, Oh, really? Okay. Well, like these are, this is an interesting topic, like kids and yoga and the pictures are funny and cute. Let me look at it more. And so Brian and I took a look, took a look. We, or, we both ordered the book and uh, you know, and then here we are and we were making uh, little funny memes with her food. And we're going to, we're going to share some of them on the, on our funny pages on Instagram once we uh, put this out next week. But uh, it's, it's just really cool that the power of connection and the power of the internet that's brought us together and sharing, you know, oh. just this common love of yoga and fun and humor. And like, you know, that she's obviously fun. Like she's 100% funny. Yes, she's funny in person. She's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who takes various foods and poses them in <laughs> position and warrior. Yeah. And, I mean, the triangle. Avocado the triangle. Avocado is the belly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, that this, is good. this girl is fun at a party. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And she, and she has four beautiful kids and an awesome husband. She actually married Scott, her college boyfriend. How and they, cool. they were the oh, it wow. couple in college. Yeah. Oh, She's how, just phenomenal. That is awesome. Yeah. That is like the pictures in the book are hilarious with the food doing yoga. And that's like when I surprised my son, Noah, like the, he was just laughing. He's just like, <laughs> especially the cover with the avocado doing trikonasana triangle pose. And he, and he yeah. knows all the poses. He's like, that's triangle. Aww. And he's going through it. it was, and, and he was, he was like, we need to do some of the recipes. I'm like, 
awesome. I need to learn how to cook. So yeah. <laughs> well, that, the whole idea behind this was to get the kids, get kids of all ages giggling about first the fun yoga poses made out of fruits and vegetables, and and then look at the actual kids who are mimicking the poses and then mimic the poses themselves, but then also identify the various fruits and vegetables that are doing the pose, and then you lift the flap, and there's a recipe to do with mom or dad or a teacher or um, another babysitter or a caregiver. This is really a tool to help parents or teachers or anybody who works with kids get them excited and engaged on trying new healthy foods and and yoga, obviously. So it, it's a bit of a tool and that was my hope and my goal and my wish. Um, and it seems to be working. And so whether it works on a few people or loads of people, I just feel like we had a lot of fun um, and it's helping to healthify kids. So that's great. Feels good. Yeah. That feel good, that feel good feeling, you know, it's like, I'm mm -hmm. doing it cause this, this feels right. Yeah. I know that. I know that one for sure. That's have you, true. have you tried any of the recipes yet? The, I, I did. Brian, did, I did the broccoli with Miranda, uh, the broccoli one. Uh, it was good. We liked that one. Like that. Oh, good. Good. I tried yeah. to take foods that kids already like and sneak in some newcomers. So like the broccoli, obviously guacamole, yeah, kids guacamole. Love guacamole. And yeah. then what you do is you sneak some steamed broccoli florets, you mush it right in. Yeah. And, and it was easy. Holy broccoli. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> Brian, Brian hasn't done anything yet because he hasn't cooked in 20 years. So he's, he's I, have, I have not yet. <laughs> Brian's going to jump straight ahead to the enchiladas. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, where's the enchiladas in this? I don't, I'm looking where the enchiladas are. <laughs> <laughs> I got to send you that link. Yeah. That's yeah, a yeah, follow yeah. up, Brian. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's so good. Um, Joy, what's your favorite yoga pose? Do you, what's your favorite one, Joy? Um... Gosh, it really depends on the day of the week, but I would have to say I, maybe Lotus. I just, I love Indian style. I love yeah. like yes. putting my feet yeah. in different positions, just so, sort of, you know, zoning out, thinking, breathing. My knees hurt thinking about Lotus, Joy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like my legs don't bend like the pretzels. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, that, <laughs> not, not so much. Yeah, I'm like the Tin Man. Can I get the squeaky can, please, and loop this guy up over here? <laughs> so, what are your favorite poses? I, I love me some, uh, some tree pose. I'm a big mm -hmm. tree pose guy. You know, I feel like you know, I'm, I'm rooting in. I teach yoga on the beach, and so mm -hmm. it's really nice to teach yoga on the beach and just set like some roots in the sand and yeah, just like powerful. feel that, feel that connection. So, I, I think about that when I teach uh, a weekly class on the beach, and that really. That that's the one lately that's been with me. Brian only does one yoga pose. Brian, go ahead. What was the pose? I normally do Pinchamire Asana all the time, but but no the forearm my, stand. My, yeah, forearm stand. But my favorite pose is pigeon pose. Like I uh, love myself hmm. pigeon. It just it's really therapeutic for me. It's like I'll, I'll get in pigeon and I'll just cry, cry, and uh, <laughs> figure figure things out. And I, I just love it. Like so, whenever I do like a home practice. I really just just settle in pigeon and just let it come out. Yeah. Just let it flow. Great. Yeah. I'm I'm feeling, you know, Bonnie's going to be listening to this. I think there's yeah. uh, going to be some new sculptures coming out. All right. All right. Yummy Yoga Volume 2. <laughs> yeah, with with uh, I I think uh, some of your podcast swag. All right. Ooh, Ooh. all right. Uh, yeah. Maybe, Maybe a Yummy Yoga adult version with the uh, enchiladas and <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Taco too. I think Taco it's gonna be. It might just be a private one for you all. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So fun. This is amazing. I love it. So, Joy, this is the perfect segue into the lighten up round uh, that we do on the show. So it's a little lightning round based around like fun little impromptu questions, like just like little fun questions. And so okay. don't 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 think too hard. You know, I know you've, you've probably done lightning rounds on other podcasts. It's nothing like this podcast. So uh, <laughs> so we'll start. We'll start simple. Who has a better tree pose, broccoli or cauliflower? Broccoli, it's great. <laughs> mm, yeah, boom. Mm -hmm. boom. I, I, I mean, love it. I think I think you know what? No, because <laughs> Polly would be like a, an anemic tree. Yeah. Hey, it's okay. Be, yeah, yeah. Hands down, it's broccoli. Broccoli wins. <laughs> It's so good. I love. I love when, uh, like, when you so much thought went into that the anemic tree. Like, how good is that? I never would have thought of that. I told you, you would never want to be a brain cell in my head. <laughs> this would not. All right, Brian. What you, Brian's the wild card. What do you got, Brian? 
if you could be any fruit in the world, what would it be? I would be a banana because it's just got such a creamy texture and sweet disposition. And it's very, very versatile. Like that. Mm, yes. And, and like it does plank pretty good. Yeah, it is a good, good plank pose. It does post. a great banana it, plank. It does like a it. great banana plank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking about planks, who could hold a plank pose longer? Al Roker or Carson Daly? Carson Daly. Oh, that was Al fast. Ro- Al's that was fast. fast. <laughs> Al Roker's got no shot. Carson Daly. Carson <laughs> Daly. Yeah. And, and, by, and by the way, I don't know that either of them would hold it very long, but I do think <laughs> when. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I it is so funny. I I always like as a kid growing up, Al Roker always on the tee, the weather, the weatherman, and like, and here we are having a conversation with you on the same show, Joy. Like, how how cool! But uh, that's that, that was a great answer. I loved it. <laughs> it's a rapid fire, Carson Daly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian, go ahead, man. What All you got? Right, one more. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh, um. It's a tie between almonds and pistachios. Ooh, yum. Mm-hmm. Yum. Now, pistachios were- and almonds are just, it, those, those uh, are addicting too, I feel. Like- yes. And I think like that is definitely my knee jerk response. I am a nutaholic. I love <laughs> all nuts. I mean, you cannot give me a Costco size bag of nuts because I will Going get down. myself into trouble there. Yeah. I just, I love nuts so much. If you were to ask me that question with a different spin, like an unhealthy food, I would have a very different answer. Okay. Unhealthy, right. food. Unhealthy, unhealthy food. <laughs> I, I, I want to know. Pizza. Yes. yes. Pizza, 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 pizza. 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 Yeah. A close second would be melty vanilla ice cream. Mm, creamy vanilla I'm ice so cream. I'm so hungry right now. I'm so <laughs> hungry right now. <laughs> One time I was showing my son, this was like a couple of years ago, I was doing a meditation and I had him meditate with me. Mm-hmm. And it was like a couple minute meditation. Then after I was like, how's that meditation? He's like, dad, all I could think about pizzas all i saw was pizzas and i was like yes you you've attained enlightenment yep you're enlightened noah (laughs) you know one of the hardest things as you all know is to really clear your mind especially to newcomers that took me a very very long time to learn yeah i'm still working on it yeah (laughs) all the time it's it's hard it's hard and especially cl- like when you have a lot on your plate mm-hmm. um, and, yeah. and that makes it even more important to learn how to do that. Just to really decompress. Yeah. Right. Decompress and just pay attention, pay attention yeah. to the thoughts coming in and coming out. Cause sometimes what I've noticed in my meditation practice is sometimes when thoughts are, are there and repetitive, it's like something that I need to prioritize. Like, you know how you do the night before, write it down. Mm-hmm. Like it's just my brain like, hey, you need to take care of this. And then once I write it down or once I deal with it, then it's gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A nice clearing. A nice clearing. 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 You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Letting it go. Well, Joy, this has been such a pleasure. Uh, Yogi Brian, so fun. Um, very grateful that you took the time to be on our show to come talk about yummy yoga, health and wellness, morning routines, gratitude, and all the fun stuff about enchiladas. How cool <laughs> this episode was. <laughs> you know, how cool this episode was. So uh, I think, I think I, with that being said, thank you. Thank you, Joy. I want to say thank you right back. This was so much fun. Yeah. So we, much fun. So thank you for having me on. And uh, I absolutely. hope you have me on again. Yeah, yes, we love, we love sure. to have yes. vol, volume two on the uh, the yummy yoga. Let, let's call two. it the, the Taco Tuesday edition. You know, we'll have all <laughs> the Mexican recipes. I don't know. I love it. More to come for you, Brian. Yes, I, I uh, didn't have a challenge for 2020, but now I'll be the I'll be a, in a cooking challenge. Thanks to Joy. Thank you. Thanks everybody listening. You'll be seeing my my cooking progression. Yes. Yes. This is exciting. This is yeah. really exciting. I'm I'm gonna go collect a whole variety of links to be sending you. Maybe what I'll do is each week I'll send you an option of two. Yes. Oh, excellent. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah, and I'm going from really zero. Like I know how to cut grilled cheese. That's pretty much it. grilled cheese. <laughs> okay. And my wife, when she listens to this, she's gonna be very very happy. That I was <laughs> about this. Wow. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yeah. laughs> there, there it is. 
Awesome. Okay, my friends. All right. With that being said, uh, we're going to sign off. Until next time, namaste. 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 Hey, this is Yogi Brian. Thank you so much for listening to the Yogi Show podcast. Isn't joy super cool? And now I have to cook. Now I have to cook those enchiladas. Joy sent me a recipe to make enchiladas. You're going to have to stay tuned how it turns out on social media. So follow our social medias. They're in the links on theyogishow.com. Special thank you to DJ Taz Rashid. He allows us to play his music on the Yogi Show. And it's great music. So he makes a great addition to your yoga class playlist. But I know you want the answer to the trivia question. And that answer is broccoli. So broccoli is the vegetable that is also a flower. Broccoli is the answer. And if you got that right, give yourself a pat on the back. Great job. I'm super proud of you. If you got that right, I'm so proud of you. Pedro's proud of you. Great job. Thank you so much for tuning into The Yogi Show. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your pet chicken, tell your pet bird, anybody that you can tell, tell them about The Yogi Show. We appreciate each and every one of you. Remember, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Namaste. Namaste.